Hey everyone, well, it's that time of the month now for a brand spanking new feeding video, Feeding Video 121. So the tarantulas have last been fed last month since I uploaded Feeding Video 120. So it's time to see which teas we'll eat and which ones do the greatest attacks. So unfortunately things won't be the same without Gretel, my Theraphosis sturmi that recently passed away, as well as my Vicularia Leta. But anyways, let's hope for the good one. We'll start uh, by alphabetical order this time. All right, number one here is Sasha. Uh, she is my mated female Acanthus curia brocklehursti, the giant white banded. And there we go. Sweet. All right, this one here is a female Aphonopelma calcodes, desert blonde. This is the only uh, state tarantula that I have. In the U.S. And yeah, she's deciding whether or not she wants to take it. <laughs> And she takes it like a good girl. Yeah, this is... What's her name again? Marilyn the Second. After my very first one, I had about 20 some odd years passed away due to old age now. It's the only female I have left. Alright, let's try my Vicalaria Versicolor in Tilly's Pink Toe. Trinity. That I got from uh, Shinerock777. I think she got it. Yeah, very, very nice Avic. This here is Alberto, my male Brachypalma albiceps, the Mexican gold red rump. He's usually a very good eater. Oh, look at that. What a strong guy. Here's Stacy, my big female albiceps. About five, five and a half inches. Come on. Oh, nice. There's a nice fang action going on here. Very lovely female, and hopefully when my male matures, I'm going to be breeding her. Yeah, she's got a fat abdomen. Very, very nice specimen. For one of the best looking <laughs> hairy species in my collection is Aragog. She is my female Brachypalma albopolosum under his curly hair. Apparently bad hair day. <laughs> Slightly on the more defensive side than my former Sue. Alright, this one here is Sue the second, my other Abopolosum curly hair. Yeah, they just love the super worms. Now, I'm going to get asked this uh, quite a few times. Whoops, sorry quite a few times already. Uh, the reason why I can't get B-Dubia roaches, I would love to use them. They're really excellent feeders to use for your tarantulas. Well, I live in Canada, and Canada has banned the sale of roaches, so I can't get any B-Dubias, I can't even get b lateralists I can't even get the Madagascar hissing cockroaches, so this is why I just resort to uh, superworms, just to get them extra fattened up. A very, very healthy specimen. Ada, wait! <laughs> Here's Leon from Resident Evil 2. This is my male Brachypalma erratum, the Mexican flame knee. And pretend that the cricket is a zombie. 
Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Zombie's pretty smart. Oh, come on, Leon. I expect him to nail it. Just look at his colors. They're really, really cool. And that's how a Brachypalma should eat. Nice. Zombie 0, Leon 1. Alright, this is for Dominic Guess. Uh, he really likes this species. This is the Brachypalma Bomi, the Mexican fire leg. <laughs> and who wouldn't love the species? They rule. Yeah, this is a little two inch spiderling already showing its full adult colors. Now let's check on my hybrid one, the Brachypalma bumgartenii cross bomi. Show you what that one looks like. So this is Chimera. She is my Brachypalma bomi cross bumgartenii, the Mexican orange beauty. I thought this was a real bumgartenii, but it's not. So let's see how she eats. Yeah, no problem. I only have two hybrids in my collection. Uh, this one, as well as my Apocalotheria Vitata or, and Ornata, that you'll see later on. Now, this will just be a showpiece tarantula. I will never breed it because I just don't like crossbreeding. I want to try to keep the species in the pure line. Yeah, it has that triangle on her carapace and has the characteristic bony legs as well as the temperament. This is me, Brachypalma Kallenbergi, the Mexican brown. Wow. Almost instantaneously. Very cool, Brachy. Alright, this is a really cool and interesting species. This one here is my Brachypalma Classy, which is the Mexican pink. Named this one Petunia, has the initials BK, so... Burger King. Mmm. Hamburgers. <laughs> oh, look at that. She's always been one of my best eaters in the genus that I have. And she's got all of her first eight legs. Oh, that's just a little mold there. But seriously, a very, very beautiful specimen. Ah, the true old hobby classic, the Brachypalma Smithy, the Mexican Red Knee. So this is my female Athena. Roughly around five inches, five and a half. Gorgeous. This one here is a female Brachypalma verdesi, the Mexican rose gray. Yep, just like my other Brackies, a very hard hitter. This one here is a green bottle blue, GBB. Chromatopalma cyanopubescens. This is a spiraling of it. And when it becomes adult, they'll have the characteristic blue legs. The abdomen will no longer be striped, it'll be covered with orange hairs and it'll have a nice emerald green carapace. Truly a very beautiful spider and surprisingly very easy to keep and just a very very hungry eater so you can just see it nailed a cricket that's almost twice his own size. <laughs> yeah that's a GBB for you. Really nice intermediate species and good web builders. For it pales comparison to this one, this is my Chinese fawn, a Chilobrachis guanaciensis. This is a 5 inch female named Zhulin, an appropriate name because uh, she's Chinese. And you can see this is the part where she broke her leg. 
I'm not going to move her too much. She's uh, pretty mean and pretty nasty. Yeah, see that? <laughs> There's where she lost a leg, right here. So you can see, seven legs, I'm just really not worried at all. Let's just keep feeding her, they'll eventually molt, and we grow back the last leg. This is exactly what happened to my Elda Facillas, who lost her palp. Yeah, and these guys grow up to about seven inches, so she's got a little bit more growing to do, not to buy much. This one here is Gordon Ramsay. Chicken is raw! The Cuban Pygmy, Critopholus Ramsey. Now, just look how the chef miraculously devours his prey. Crikey. Ooh, that is messed up. One thing in reality, you should never mess with the good old Chef Ramsay. <laughs> yeah, definitely a mature male. Sucks that I don't have a female to breed him, and no one else in Canada has them, but at least I'll keep him comfortable until the day he dies. Yeah, right here you can see the hooks and his pulps. Sweet. All right, this one here is a Cithracanthus living stony, which is the Livingston's tarantula. I named this uh, gal Mystery because it was sold to me as an unknown species from Tarantula Canada about four years ago. Got this one from the expo. I think the third expo I visited. I do have a video of it, me uh, getting it. Yep, those are over five and a half, close to six inches. This one here is Stella. She is my Cyclosternum fasciatum, E. Costa Rican tiger rump. This is around a three inch female. Oh, please eat. It'd be really cool if you do. Come on, Stella. Come on, I think millions of people that are watching this want you to see eat. Aww. Really? Come on. Aww, that's my sweetie. That is my sweetie. Really lovely looking lady. Right, this is my Daemon Diadema, which is the tailless whip scorpion. Oh, she almost missed. Oh, she almost got it. Yeah, this is Dinah. Actually, there we go. Let's push it there, I see. There we go. Look at that, folks. That's how a tailless whip scorpion eats. Non-venomous arachnid. This one here is Olivia. She is the Encycratella olivacea, which is the Tanzanian olive baboon. Yeah, instantly got it. Now, this is the third arboreal baboon next to the H. maculata and the S. calcium. Not very commonly seen in the hobby, but extensive web builder she is. Alright, this one here is Cleveland. Hey, 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 fellas. This is my Phobos Rufescens, the burgundy skeleton tarantula. 
Whoo! Nice! No, 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 no! <laughs> He's crazy. And here is a very beautiful female. Uh, this is a Euathlis proclomaclasi, the Chilean green-blue femur. Uh, Stormy76 wanted me to get a specimen like this and I finally have one after four years of searching. Yeah, just kind of piggy like Stella. Yeah, eventually she got it. This is what she looks like. Um, does need to go over a molt, but other than that, she's really pretty. Uh, temperament on this specimen here, very, very nervous and skittish. But I haven't really seen any defensive threat displays yet from her. Tuning us, I knew it. This one here is my Eucratocelsus patchibus, the stout legged baboon. Oops. Alright, we'll give a second one. I don't know if she'll take a second one, but we'll see. Hmm. <laughs> Gotta love your baboons, that's for sure. And these are infamous pet holes, so... Dig a, dig a burrow, and... You rarely see them. See those uh, fat, bushy legs? Semi-docile, not too defensive, but I wouldn't handle this one just because of their high potency of venom. This is the very first tarantula I bought from Tarantula Canada. This one here is Yasmin. She is my pink zebra beauty, Eupalatris camperstratus. Highly recommended for the beginner. Fantastic eaters and you really got a super docile temperament compared to the rose hairs, which can be moody at times, depending on what individual you have. Yeah, she's about four and a half inches. She is mature. I'm expecting her to grow at least an inch and a half, and that'll be it for full grown. Pretty boy in the hood. This is Roy, my Brazilian black, Grandma Stola Pulcra. Yeah, these pokras have really good appetites next to the pokra peas, which is the chanko gold, and the, you'll see those in a second. Yeah, this is a male around three and a half inches. Now yeah, I'm going to show you my monster female, Ebony, who's really, really aggressive and defensive. Okay, so this is Ebony. I'll try to get some fang action going on for you guys. just to see how large these fangs are. These are about three quarters to an inch long. Rivals that of the Therifosa species as well as the Elasiodora. Yeah, she's been with me about 16 years now. Well, she's still relatively young. This is Wendy, my female Chaco Goldeny Gramasola Pulcropies. <laughs> she nailed it. Here we go, Charlotte. She's big, around six inches. Let's see if she's interested. 
knowing her, that's probably likely the case. Come on, Charlotte. Hmm. Guess no Edie today. That sucks. Alright, now for the old common rose here. The Gramostola rosea. So this is Angelica. This is my... I don't know, I would say a brown phase. Since if you look... At her carapace, it's more of a brown morph. This one here has the pink carapace. You can actually see, or maybe Angelica could be the same one. Yeah, this is Michaela. Um, try feeding her super rooms there. She's not going at it. It's very normal for rose hairs to fast every once in a while. But as long as you have a good size abdomen, I wouldn't worry too much. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look at that. I was telling her that she wouldn't eat and she's in front of the camera. What a nice girl. This is a rose hair red phase. This is Morris Rose, my only male. Raised from a little tiny spiderling. This guy always hits like a ton of bricks. I seem to have both this T and the cricket wants to escape. Now, if Morris doesn't eat, I know he's in pre-molt, because he's always been a strong eater, as you'll see in five, four, three, two, one. Any time now, Morris. <laughs> yeah, always been the most consistent eater in my collection. Here is Laura. She is my Gramostola species mall, which is called the Orange Fluff Tarantula. see a lot better than my rose here. These are really cool species. You find them a lot more available in the UK rather than Canada for sure as well as the US. This is a young female Hadagenes possidens, the flat rock scorpion. The last time she tore the cricket's leg off with her pinchers. So let's see if I can try to replicate it with this feeding video. Oh, I got it again. You can see. She grabbed it.
Oh. Ooh, nasty. Kicker's only got three legs now. Oh, she wants it. She wants it. All right. I'm going to have to tongue feed this one now. Oh, come on. Almost, almost. Yeah, look at that. There we go. Yay. Ooh. And stinging. Right there. It's impressive how you look at the flat rock scorpion and see how tiny, tiny her tail is compared to the other species like your emperors or your androctinus bicolor, the African fat tail. Truly amazing. Here's my Hedescadra maculata, the Togo starus baboon. I'm not sure if this one's going to eat or not, but, oh, there we go. She's the tarantula in my most popular video of all time on YouTube, that pulling out the H. maculata sac, that's this very same female, four years, almost five years ago, and she scored me almost 3.3 million hits. Alright, this film one of my three true spiders. This is a Hogna species Tucson, which is an Arizona wolf spider. There we go. Ow, on the chest. Whoa. Yeah, these true spiders, like the Jumping spiders have the best vision, so they can see much more further and clearer than an actual tarantula. This one here is Elena from Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. This is a Hysterocrates gigas, the Cameroon red baboon. An amazing eater. This will be a little bit tricky to see. This is the Cochiana brunipeeps, which is the Brazilian dwarf pink leg. Snatched. Yeah, you can try to make up the body of the cricket. There it is. Oh, hang on. I got a good angle of this one. There it is. That's what my Cochiana looks like. It's probably about an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter. They only get up to having a two and a half inch leg span, so they're not really not the largest species, but very simple to care for, just like your Sirico, Siricosma species, the dwarfs, like the Elegans and the Perez Melesi. Hopefully one day it'll go out and catch you in a better video of it. This is another one that you're going to have trouble seeing. This is the Lampropelma Nigerimum, also known as the Sanghi Black. Oh, there we go. kind of saw it jump a little bit. Yeah, pretty much as similar in care to your Lampropelma Uh These get up to having a 5-inch leg span, 
and uh, they kind of look like a very dark black, almost blue velvet in appearance. Really remarkable arboreal in the Lambert Palma genus. Well, I could tell that she molted, so maybe around three quarters of an inch. This is my Lassiodora difficilis, the Brazilian fire red bird eater. Close relative to the salmon pink. This is Dora the Explorer. Nice. Just love the way that uh, she attacks. This is Willow. She is my Lassiodora fracta, the smoky gray bird eater. Try to put it close to her leg. Yeah, definitely not a tea I tried to mess with. Yeah, a little bit hair kicky. I find the def the fracta to be more defensive than the parahibana. Mine aren't so so bad, but this one, whew. a little bit over the top, but not as much as the Cancerides Haitian brown bird eaters. All right, this one here is my Lassiodora parahibana, the salmon pink bird eater. This one is Daniela. Pretty fast beast. Here's Goma. Not too bad. This one here is a Lassiodorides striatus, the Goliath tripleg bird eater. Inch and a half sling named Vera. A really cool megalomorph. This one here is a Linotheli phallox, which is the Brazilian diplorid. Look at that! <laughs> nice! And these spiders are famously known for their oversized spinnerets. Ah! Look we, looky here. I do see an epigastric furrow, so this could be a sign of a female diplorid. I'm pretty happy. He's got up to having a four inch leg span and make the craziest webs. They're also called funnel webs, but not to be confused with the Sydney funnel web. A robustus. These guys are harmless compared to that one. This is a really cool arachnid. This is not a tarantula, spider, or scorpion, although the common name is a whip scorpion, or I like to call it the giant American vinegaroon. So this is Vinny, my female. So let's see if she's hungry, and yes, she is. Yeah. Very, very cute arachnid. Eight legs. Kind of does look like a scorpion. But does rarely bite, or doesn't even bite at all. And non venomous. The only thing that comes out from this tail, as you can see here, is acetic acid, which is vinegar. And lets off a really warm acid and pretty stinky. So far she hasn't sprayed me once yet. Good girl. I just love this one. Very, very unique addition to my collection. Here's Lily. I'm not sure if you can see her way down here. This is my female Monocentropus belfulri, the Socotra Island Blue Baboon. Snapped. Crackle pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies. This is what the beautiful Balfouri looks like. Such a pretty looking spider.
Hey, Baldy. <laughs> uh, this is my Nandu Chromatis female, the white striped bird eater named Nadia. See if she's going to eat. Oh, there we go. Come on, girl. Doesn't seem to be interested. Oh well, still a beautiful spider to look at. When it gets a lot older, you'll notice that the carapace is going to start to become a darkish black color versus the gold one that you see right here. This one gives me the itches. This one here is a Nandu Colorado Velosis, the Brazilian black and white. 5 inch female named Mina. Oh, yes. She nailed it. Around 5 inches. Here's Darius, mature male, Nandu tripepi. Giant blonde bird eater. Not a problem for him, being a very old specimen. For my Filipino subscribers, this is your local tarantula, Orphanaceous Filipinus orange form, the Filipino orange. Simply amazing. This one here is a pink bloom bird eater, Pamphibia species CF platyama. I named Jade. Oh wow, she was a lot faster than the last time I fed her, last month. Yeah, she's a lot more darker than my previous specimen a couple years ago named Nikolai. Uh, he was almost all purple in body color. That's usually a sign of a male, Pamphibedius. This one here is a sexed female. Pamphibedius ultramarinus, the Ecuadorian purple pink femur. One of my favorite members of the Pamphogenius. Pampho. Pampho awesome. Yes. There we go. Sweet. This one here is a Phlogius. Crassy peeps, if you can actually see it, the Queensland whistling spider from Australia. Yeah, there we go. It's about a four inch female. A spawn from hell. <laughs> so this is David, um, Rose's mature male Permitibus concerties. This is the one that tried to kill me <laughs> in the last feeding video. I upgraded him to a little smaller kill critter keeper. Uh, he's definitely in heat, so I'm going to be mating him at the end of this week for a date with Isabella as well as um, uh, Jezebel, my females. Oh no, not this again. Well, he's not hungry. This one here is Don Manuel for Mictopus erratus, the Cuban bronze. There we go, a little male, around three inches. Here's a little temper tantrum Jezebel, my female Haitian brown bird eater. I'm going to start power feeding her right now, so that way I could 
prep him up, prep her up for the male, so he doesn't become a threat. So I'll give another one. A little smaller one. Awesome. That's good. And here's Isabel. Or Isabella. My other Haitian brown bird eater. <laughs> okay, there's one, and I'll just give one more. Oh, 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 get it, get it, get it, get it. Come on. Oh, nice. She's got two. Fatality. Here is Holly Formictopus platus, the Caribbean island bird eater. Superb eater. A lot of people ask me on my channel what my favorite tarantula is in my collection. And it's this one here, my Pocotheria bara, the ivory lowland ornamental, aka Safusca lowland. And there we go. This is an impressive six inch female. Fully adult. This is Tatiana, my female Pocotheria Hanuma Villa Sumica, Ramashwarm ornamental. Four years ago, they used to be like over $200 here in Canada. Now, price dropped to 65 each. Thankfully, we got a lot of breeding of these going on. Here's Sebastian, my male Hanuma Villa Sunica. Oh, he's hungry. And I named this guy after the Evil Within character. I'll be playing that game in the near future, once I'm done with Sound Hill games. Sweet. Alright, so, sorry for the bad lighting, guys. So, we'll try to feed Okami, which is my mature female, Pocotheria ornata, the fringed ornamental. She's huge, around 8.5 inches. Look at that. Oh, look at that pokey. I'll give her another one. Get her nice and plump. Yeah, these pokies are my favorite. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> nice. Alright, this one here is my Pocotheria regalis Indian ornamental, one named Zelda. Ooh, lovely. Yeah. Good old 8 inch girl. Five gallon tank on its side. Perfect enclosure for one. Alright, this is Pandora, my other regalis. She's huge. One, two, three. <laughs> Loves catching in midair. It's about seven and a half inches, a little bit shorter than Zelda but still pretty large and pretty healthy. This one here is a Pocotheria smithy, yellow-backed ornamental. Allison. Bingo. She grabbed it. This one here is a Mysore ornamental, Pocotheria Striata. Nailed instantly. Little female that I got from tanglesandwebs.com. This one I'm not going to feed because it's just molted recently. This is a Pocotheria vitata, which is the ghost ornamental. Really cool coloration. 
and the patterns. As you can see, thread pose. Fangs are dark cherry red, so not quite ready to feed. And you can note that the interior legs are not the yellow color that you used to see on a Pira Gala, so she's telling me, leave me alone or else I'll bite. This is Amy, my second hybrid in my collection. This is a Ornata and Vitata crossbreed, so I call it the ghost fringed ornamental. Not too bad. I'm going to see if she's going to be ready to feed. This is my newly molted Trinidad Chevron, Samopoas Cambridge Eye. Looks like a million bucks. Kaboom! <sighs> she's so green. Really love the coloration of her. Alright, this is Misty, my 4 inch female Somapolis Reduncus, the Costa Rican Orange Mouse. I have to rehouse her tomorrow. What a good girl. Pretty too. This one here is an OBT, Cherniochilis marinus red form. Lovely. Nice Georgia. Six inch girl. It's one of my Centipedes, this one here is a Scolopendra alternans, giant Haitian centipede. It's actually biting my tongs. And you can see it has a pretty strong grip. Holy cow. Um, yeah. Huh. It's truly one of those things. where you have a uniqueness to the feeding videos. Alright, same creepy crawly. This is my other Skullpendra Alternans, Giant Haitian Centipede. Oh, there we go. Ooh, nice constricting there. Yep. <laughs> There's like a snake, how they attack their prey. Despite having being called a centipede, he doesn't even have a hundred legs. It probably has at least twenty to twenty two different pairs. So like forty four legs. Alright, this one here is a Scolopendra suspinis, the giant Vietnamese centipede. My smaller one passed away, so I just have the bigger one. Uh, he's a coming. Okay. Seems he didn't get it.
There we go. Tapankinius gigas, the orange tree spider. Tap, 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 tap. There's a nice female, around three inches, named Barb. Here's my little Tapnikinius Sancti Vincenti spiraling, the St. Vincent's tree spider. Usually has a crazy attack of how they eat, just like all your tappies do. As you can see, not a problem. This one here is Marin, after Dragon Ball Z. The Thrixel Palma Sanulum. Cobalt Red Rump. Boom! <laughs> Very nice specimen. Good for the beginner who loves blue tarantulas and are somewhat handleable. Alright, this is currently my only Theraphosa in my care with recent passing of Gretel, my T. Sturmy. This is a Theraphosa apophysis, burgundy goliath bird eater. Let's see how this one does. Now, this is a third instar T. It's like its third molt. Oh, look at that! Impressive! Impressive! I love this. Yeah. Pink feet and all the legs, so the true Theraphosa apophysis. Yeah, starting to become my favorite tea. Alright, this one here is a Theraphosa. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Not a Theraphosa. Sure eats like one. <laughs> Anyways, this is Jan. My Thrixel Palma Prurians, the Chilean green velvet male. Wow, that is the quickest I ever seen a meat. Alright, Plan Brothers told me that this scorpion may be a Europlectus species. There we go. Sweet. Scorpion that really doesn't refuse to feed. But first anyone? <laughs> That's the way she likes it. All right, this is a Vitellius parananiensis, the Argentinian brown bird eater, named Veronica. Ate it without trouble. And last but certainly not least is Genesis. He is my Xenophus imanus, mature, no, immature male. The Colombian Lesser Black. Yeah, no stopping him from me from not eating. Yeah, don't see hooks yet. I'm assuming by next molt he'll mature. Alright, now for Espa. She is my high hypo yellowtail leopard gecko. Such a mouthful. Trying to get her to come. Hmm, super worms. Now, this is the only animal apart from my guinea pigs and hamster that I feed most often. And sometimes I'll give some uh, calcium powder. Here's the second one. Boom! Now I use Reptocarpet, it's a good substrate for geckos, so that way it won't get impacted, which means it'll ingest part of the substrate. 
I love the way it licks its choppers. All right, let's see if I can try to get it going. Yeah, she's lazy this time of the evening. Oh, there we go. And one more. I usually give her about four every three or four days. I feed it twice a week. Even though I post monthly feeding videos, I, I feed this one more often. And one more. Mmm, tasty. And there's Maggie, my 10 year old female Chih Tzu. Hey, Maggie. Hey, girl. What's the matter? Itchy. Sit. Paw. Shh. Paw. Paw, paw, paw. Other paw. Sit. High five. Roll over. Roll over. Come on, roll over. Come on. Roll over. Give me a kiss, kiss. Give me a kiss, kiss. Hey. Shh. She's very talkative. <laughs> Such a good girl. Hey, you. Alright, this is my Russian dwarf hamster. Little female. Over a year old now. <laughs> Let's put her back and give her a little carrot to see if she's hungry. here. She'll eat it. Very cute, but she keeps me up all night with her teething. That's why I got her a chew toy, and she's got a little tunnel with some nice uh, fabric to uh, make a uh, little blankie. But she's good. Of course, how can you not love my two guinea pigs? Haley. And Leah. Leah is a Abyssinian female and she is a Sheltie, or Silky. She's got long hair. It's really cool. Both of them are around two years old. <laughs> Haley has a cute face. Kind of reminds me of a rabbit. She loves to have her chin scratched. <laughs> and would you believe I found this on the Gazette uh, on Tuesday this here is a prehistoric rodent that stood about a meter and a half tall it lived about three million years ago so that's coming from the Cenozoic era in the tertiary time period and the scientific name of this character is Josie Forogasia Manessi. Kind of looks like a larger version of a capybara. Big teeth. So anyways everyone I hope you enjoy this awesome feeding video. I think the best attack had to go from that Therophosa apophysis, the Burgundy Goliath bird eater. It's such a shame that um, my 
Gretel had passed away and I just found some more teas that unfortunately passed away like the Escalciatum and the smaller uh, Scolopendra and the uh, Aerticans. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed everyone. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos.